I'm Griff, podcast host and editor-in-chief of the eBay for Business podcast, and I'm here with a panel of eBay leaders and colleagues to bring you a really special podcast recording. We usually like to start talking about the holiday and the holiday shopping and the holiday sourcing season with our sellers starting in August. And over the next 15 minutes, we're going to discuss the eBay holiday resources for sellers, talk about buyer trends that we see and predictions for what's going to happen during the holiday season, and of course, the ever important shipping updates. And joining me today, we have first Christy Demo, Senior Manager of Seller Marketing, and she's going to cover seller holiday res resources. Christy, how are awesome. you? Awesome. Griff, thanks so much for having me again. It's been too long. I always love getting the chance to come chat with you and chat with our sellers. And I, I still can't believe we're chatting about holidays where the year just started. But I'm excited to be here. And now is the time to get planning. So let's let's chat about it. And also joining Kirst, uh, Christy and I will be Stuart Reichenbach. He's the Senior Director of Shipping and he's going to cover shipping for the holidays. Stuart, welcome back. You're regular on our podcast. I'm sure our audience knows you pretty well, but it's nice to see you again. Thanks, Griff. Great to be back. And uh, Christy, nice to see you as well. And Adam, uh, looking forward to the discussion. And yeah, super excited to talk shipping and what's a, a little bit more of a stable environment uh, right now as we head into uh, in the peak. Yeah. And you mentioned Adam. Adam Ireland is the vice president of operations here at eBay, and he's going to cover what they've, see, they've seen so far and what they predict for holiday trends and predictions for this. Uh, it's going to be another unusual holiday season. So thank you all panelists for joining us today. Let's get started. Adam, I have a question from a seller. What are consumer attitudes going to be like in this holiday season? Well, that's a good one, Griff. And, uh, Unfortunately, the reality of this pandemic that we're still living through is it's the only predictable thing about it is that it's pretty unpredictable. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling optimistic and uh, there's definitely kind of a, a positive path heading into the holidays uh, where we're seeing kind of consumer sentiment back, bounce back. You know, people even talk about a return, into, return to sort of the roaring 20s from, from last century and seeing that uh, reemerge as, uh, as we kind of come out the backside of this, of this pandemic. And then I think there's a couple of other trends that are going to play out and have sort of been emerging over the last few years. And I'd expect us to, to see them sort of continue, really. Uh, so you think about something like conscious consumerism, which is sort of, you know, people making their purchases based on things like the social impact of uh, the seller that they're buying from or the environmental impact of the product. Uh, and I really think that that's something that, again, as you know, we see Generation Z and millennial buyers becoming more and more predominant uh that we'll see more and more of that happening uh over time and then i think uh you know you're also going to continue to see people wanting to shop small business i think that's been a, a big piece of, of what we've seen happen through the pandemic is people have seen small businesses struggling and it's it's sort of opened their eyes to um the benefits that small business businesses bring to all of us uh and start, so again sort of starting to see that now bounce back as the world opens up and people are wanting to, to support those businesses that have, have had such a tough time of it Last year, uh, in the in the middle of the pandemic, at its height, uh, we had come out with a lot of predictions about what sellers should be sourcing, what's trending at the time, looking at last holiday season. It was pretty spot on, but it was very unusual because it all revolved around people not leaving the house and still needing to either be entertained or to have events, whether it's just with their family. As you said earlier, it looks like we've opened up a little bit. Uh, what goods and categories this year, sort of post-ish, I won't say post, but post-ish trends, uh, the pandemic, what are we seeing as trends now into the holidays this year? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting because basically you can sort of take what we had last year and flip it, it's on its head, and you start to get to, uh, to some of those trends that we're expecting to see, right? So uh, last year, obviously, People weren't able to meet, meet up for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, for whatever those, those winter festivals that, that people were, would normally be getting together for. Um, and we're expecting that's going to be a bit, big change this year, right? Like lots of families are going to start wanting to be together again, having missed last year. Um, and so I think we should be expecting that entertainment's going to be a really big theme and that people are going to be wanting to be out there, right? Like last year, you just needed what you needed for your immediate family. Like this year, it's going to be I think we're going to have big, big gatherings as people get together and want to celebrate uh, in larger groups. Um, and then I think you're going to see that in the in the fashion space as well, right? So um, you know, 
athleisure wear very much the the thing that we saw peak through the through the pandemic and i don't think that's going away because i think we've all <laughs> learned to love our nice cozy clothes uh but i do think as people are going out and celebrating maybe there's some more formal christmas uh or holiday parties going on uh you are going to see sort of that more of that formal wear the jeans will come back you know things like purses handbags luxury goods that people haven't had the chance to to use and to spoil themselves with um, would expect to start seeing uh, seeing that come come back again a little bit more as well. But there's still some categories as well, though, Griff, that are still kind of impacted by the pandemic. And so when you look at things like electronics, these are categories that have very complex supply chains. And, and those supply chains are often based in, in places where the pandemic is still having a, a real impact. Um, you know, the PS5, which was so hard to get hold of all through last holiday, that's still not easily available, and they're predicting that it still won't be um, by this holiday. Uh, a new Nintendo Switch is going to be coming out, and again, like if I was a betting man, I think there's going to be it's going to be really hard to get your hands on on that and, and a number of the other kind of hot electronic uh, items as we as we go into the, the holidays as well. I've heard a lot of buzz already in the in the the reseller market about trying their best to get those items when they can, so that they can turn them on eBay for a profit because it's pretty much understood with the chip situation now that these are going to be hard to get so if you're if you're able to buy something whether you want to resell it or you want to give it as a gift you got to do it now exactly yeah uh thank you very much adam <laughs> that's great information <laughs> let's move on to christy christy um we're going to talk with you about tools and services that ebay provides this last year has been really really transformative on eBay when it comes to the amount of uh, tools and especially the information with Terapeak and reports that the product team has brought to market for sellers. Um, how can eBay sellers leverage these tools and services during the holiday season to boost their sales? Yeah, Griff, totally. It's such an important question. And I think all those tools and resources are important. And I think too, like not doing anything crazy that you've done all year. I think it's about planning and preparing and being thoughtful about your strategy. And like you said, using Terapeak to research supply and demand. I think Adam just gave you a lot of great tips about some hot things, but inevitably there will be more things that we didn't think of and there will be lots of great research out there and Terapeak is a great way to do that. Um, and then once you know what you want to sell and you're ready, like optimizing those listings, kind of similar like we always recommend. You can use the listing quality report, see how your listings are looking, see what tips and feedback we might have for you. And then, you know, we always have the four golden rules for the perfect listing. Have a great title have a great description. Obviously, photos are key. And then obviously setting your price in a competitive way. I have a fifth one you left out. Item specifics. Item I'm specifics. How could we forget? So important. We got to get those items found. We need to make sure buyers can find all those great items. That's right. Absolutely. And that sort of leads into another one, which is promoted listings. Of course, promoted listings is an awesome way and a great time to lean in. Promoted listings is holiday. There's going to be more shoppers than ever. You want to make sure your items are, are being seen as as many places as possible. Um, and we know that, that it can help boost the listing visibility by 36% 36% um, in some placements across eBay. So, and it's so easy. If they have, if it's a great time to try it. If you haven't, you just set the ad rate, leave it, and then you only pay for it if it sells. So there's really no risk. There's only upside. So definitely recommend giving that one a try or leaning into that a little bit more on holiday. Yeah, promoted listings is a huge topic, a uh, perennial topic on the podcast. Uh, where could where could sellers go to know about all these resources besides emailing me and saying where do I find these where can we send them directly so <laughs> well, that that's they, always so a great they, option of well, course I don't know. of course yeah no <laughs> no we don't want to overload you too much Griff so obviously always check the eBay seller news to Griff's point like if we have any new exciting information it'll always be coming up there then always seller center is still and always a great uh, resource for everyone we'll be updating seller center regularly with tips and tricks on holiday and improve and, and additional information on holiday. And then of course, as you guys know, we're everywhere. We're so many places where sellers can connect. Come to the eBay community boards. We have so many people coming there and having a conversation and helping each other. 
and just giving you that community vibe. Um, so that's a great place. You can visit us on eBay for Business, on Facebook. Um, you can find us on YouTube. Tons of useful information there. And then, of course, we have the eBay Seller School where you can see a ton of different videos. If you need help with something or you need some inspiration, eBay Seller School is a great way to get some quick information um, to help you with your business. So we're everywhere and we want to engage with you and chat with you and, and help you this holiday season. Is there a particular channel that you may have left off? Uh, the I'll podcast? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one's a given. Like, that one's, like, obvious. That's, like, breathing air. Like, we all, of course, will be on the podcast and loving it. So, yeah. So, please come and continue to listen. It's ebay.com forward slash podcast. If this is your first of hearing of it, this is a good place to put it. So, there's my plug, and I promise I won't do it again. Christy, it's always Christy. It's, it's always a pleasure to uh, speak with you, and uh, thank you for all the great information. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, let's move over to shipping. Last year, shipping was a huge topic because, well, I mean, there's no other way to put it. The the pandemic uh, really caused some major disruption in supply chain and also in operations. None of it was intentional. All of it was difficult for everyone. Stuart, welcome. Stuart Reichenbach, as you know from the podcast, is the VP in charge of shipping. And at first up, I want to know, oh, wait a minute. Did I just promote you? You did. Oh, you did. okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just realized uh, that I, I, I want you to be VP, but I, unfortunately, you're still director, but we're Griff, looking ahead, right? Griff, I'll be back every week if you keep doing that. <laughs> I will. Uh, so, Stuart, first up is how is the shipping network doing right now? Uh, I, it's, hard to, it's hard to get a handle on it. Uh, you guys deal with the carriers, all three of them, uh, every day. Do you have any information about how what's, go what's going on uh, and updating us to the status of their service levels? Sure, Griffin. Hey, it's great to be back. Um, we did get a lot of attention last year. Um, before I get into what's going on this year, you know, I always like to thank our amazing sellers for everything they do in the complicated world of shipping. Uh, it's not easy. I said it last year a bunch of times. It's not easy in regular times and certainly with the pandemic and the surge in volume across the networks, it got even more challenging and inconsistent. So thanks everyone for, for what you do. Uh, you know, the, the networks right now, um, I think some relatively good news. Uh, we've got some real stability over the last four or five months, really from all three of the carriers. Um, the United States Post Office, I think we all know, had the most challenges last year and even into the beginning of this year. But they're largely back on track with more consistent on-time service. Uh, UPS continues to operate very, very effectively and We've seen some delays in the FedEx ground network, but um, really fairly limited um, and really no long tail deliveries across any of the carriers. So right now we're in, in good shape. Acceptance scans, which is something we always talk about as well, also in really good shape across the networks. FedEx and UPS are uh, stronger in that category than the post offices, but the post office is performing at, at, at um, levels even better than 2019. So right now we're in in relatively good shape there. That's good to hear. I know that as the volume increases coming into the holiday season that hopefully it won't, but that could change, but our shipping team will stay on top of that and keep us updated as uh, necessary. What about beyond holiday? I mean, I'm thinking about after the holidays are over, are we expecting more high volume post holiday like we saw this year? This year was incredible. Last year, you know, we it was just before the pandemic, but it, it didn't seem for a lot of sellers that it, it ever let up. It was just, you know, there was high volume that just continued right after the holidays. No, no, that's, and that's right. And again, this was uh, uh, pandemic related. The peak is always the peak. You put the pandemic on top of it and there was just so much volume uh, in the networks that it took a handful of months into 2021 to get that right sized. Um, you know, look, I think we're going to see a really strong peak again this year uh, and probably an early one. There's There's been, I guess, a little bit of movement back towards brick and mortar retail, but online e-commerce is very strong. Uh, and let's let's keep in mind, while all three carriers have, have done some different things with their networks and added capacity, none of them have gone out and invested to the degree uh, nor should we, I think we expect them to. None of them, though, have have put in enough capacity to meet all of the demand that will be out there. So I think it's going to be 
a, a bit of a challenge uh, as we head into this year, this year's peak, and and maybe even into early part of 2022. Um, so I think it's going to be a challenge. Still a little bit early to tell, but we're going to be back in the next couple of months to talk more about what we're seeing and certainly a little bit more about our playbook as we head into peak. Based on your what you've seen and what you've experienced, what are your uh, list of best practices that sellers should keep in top of mind coming into yeah. the holiday season? But a couple of things first: estimated delivery dates, right? Uh, that's on us, and we have a team that works with the carriers on a daily basis, making changes to our delivery window so that we can offer the very best uh, delivery estimates to your buyers. It's not going to be perfect, particularly in peak, but it's going to be good. It's going to be it's going to be pretty strong. So let us deal with that. We'll continue to communicate with you on what we're doing with uh, estimated delivery dates, like we did last year. What we need you to do as sellers is handle time. Whatever your state it is, do it. Don't be more. Don't be less. Hit that handle time, and as always, communicate uh, with your seller or with your buyers. That's also a, a very important thing. Uh, we talked a little bit about what the carriers are doing. Uh, UPS and FedEx says they cap their volume so their, their, their service remains consistent. If you're shipping on eBay labels, and we want you to be shipping on eBay labels, there is no cap to your volume. So, you know, you know your transactions on eBay and labels purchased through UPS and FedEx and put into their retail network are going to move and they're going to be pretty consistent. So. That's another tip as we think about this year to really think about. Consider expedited shipping, uh, absolutely. And think about your return policy. At least as a paid option, if, for example, if you're offering free, so that a buyer can select, right. yeah. Guys I want to, and gals, I want to thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to talk to us during eBay Open. Uh, Adam Ireland, uh, Kirsty Demos, and Stuart Reichenbach, uh, we appreciate your taking the time. Uh, to share this insight and guidance, it's really uh, very important, especially this time of year. And I'm sure I speak for my audience or our audience of sellers that they, we all appreciate it. And uh, it, as a final thank you to everyone who is watching uh, to our panel, let's give them a big virtual round of applause in the chat. Now, uh, audience, please stick around. Next up, I'm going to sit down with a panel of sellers to discuss their own plans to make the most out of the holiday in 2021.